Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world, I'm not quite sure. I'm actually testing out a new phone today, so um, hopefully it should be all, all beans. Um, today, who am I? I, am, I haven't really told anybody who I am. All I've done is waffled on about what's been going on in life and, oh, we've got flies here now. Uh, what's been going on in life and what's been going on with me and you know effects of doing aggression wanting to flame in you know chuck myself off a bridge or a building um i'm just me so i'm going to dive into who am i um where i come from and all the rest of it but before i do <laughs> as always i'm in a Oh, these flies. I'm in a bit of a well a different situation i've been here a couple of times before um, my son said to me this morning, I said to my son, I'm going to go and do a video this morning. Where shall I do it? He said, go and do it at that little jetty, blah, blah. I said, yeah, but I've done a couple. He said, but that's really good and the sea's calm. And he's correct. Look at that. Unbelievable. The tide's actually in. Um, so it's very nice. Right, who am I? Well, I'm just me, Jason Palmer from, from I mean, the Americans. Jason Palmer from the hood, if you like. For the UK, Jason Palmer from a rough council estate. Um, I was actually born in, in Oldham, near Manchester. Uh, and then mum and dad split up, blah, 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 loads of violence, all the rest of it. And then finally moved down to the Midlands, um, which is where I got this lovely accent from. <laughs> um, my mother, she she went, unfortunately, my mother was put into a, a really rough council estate in a little place called Droitwich in Worcestershire. Um, everybody will know it was you originally called the Boycott. Well, we, it was nicknamed the Bronx for, um, well, for reasons that most people will understand. There was a, a massive racial uh, thing going on there. You know, not just different colour, different races. I mean, we had, uh, we had gypsies there. We had, obviously had the Pakistanis and the Indians and uh, the Nigerians and different racial, just different racial backgrounds. I myself, I've never been racist, didn't matter who they were. Um, I mean, I've got cousins who were black, um, you know, and, and he may see this, she may see this too. Um, but I've got cousins who are black and I stuck up for them all of my life, all of my life, you know, whenever, Whenever there was any racial problems, Jace was there, smashing the crap out of people. <laughs> that was when I was younger. I'm not like that anymore. Um, so, living on a rough counter state with all that, you, you, your, your way of thinking in life is very different to your way of thinking if you were brought up in the middle of Oxford, for say. Um, in the middle of Tennessee, in America. Um, you know... <sighs> It's very, very different because you see life completely different to others. You can't really comprehend the the normality, if you like. I mean, it, for me now, this is normal. For kids living here, this is also normal, but they wouldn't see anything that I have seen. You know, my son, for instance, I always said, my son will never, ever live on a council estate. I would rather live in a caravan in a field. He will never live on a council estate because the stuff that I've seen, done, been involved in and, you know, had happened to me and my family. I would never want to wish that on anybody. So who am I? Yeah, you know, I was a kid who was... I wasn't bullied as a youngster. Um, all the way up until sort of 11. Then I went into the high school, which is senior school. Um, actually met my best friend who has been my best friend all my life, more or less. Uh, Rob. Um, he'll hopefully he'll watch this one day. He can't get his head around it in a minute. <laughs> um, and I met my friend, and and then we were in a bit of a group where we were it seemed to have been bullied and picked on. Now I'd already started boxing by the age of eleven because I'd been bullied by some older lads, and it was like a 1940s story. My dad took me down to the park, and he made me beat up every one of them one by one, and. I did it and then he made sure I went to the boxing club. I hated it because that wasn't me when I was a kid. I didn't like fighting, it wasn't my thing. But actually once you get into it, your mind and your mindset starts changing. The day I knew I, I could knock somebody out or hurt somebody, it bang, I was a different person. And then all of a sudden, 
I was hunting the bullies, if you like. I've never been some, somebody who would instigate a problem, never, not even when I was drunk, never ever instigated a problem. Always seemed to have to finish it, if you like, or get involved in it. I don't know why. Um, and as I grew up, um, obviously the bullies started to slow down. They all got to know me. I mean, there was a nickname in school, actually, Alf. <laughs> uh, uh, another good friend of mine who, who actually nicknamed me as soon as he saw me. As a youngster, I started to have a boxer's nose. So it started to come out a little bit and go wide a little bit. And you all remember there was a TV show in America and the UK called Alf Garnet. Um, and Perry, who I went to school with, nicknamed me Alf. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Um, you know, as the years went on, the nose got a lot different. Um, I had it rebuilt in 2001. Um, and so, as, as time went on, you know, I was nicknamed Alf. I was a bit of a loony as well. You know, I was never... Bullies didn't frighten me. It didn't matter if there was ten of them. I didn't care. I just didn't like bullies. I'm not, I'm not into being uh, a bully. I never have been. I can't stand them. Even now, later in life, if I, if I see, hear, do, or even... You know, or even hear about bullies. It's it's not something that I I like. Uh, I, I, I just don't like bullies. You know, there was one incident. I'll get back to that in a minute. Um, so as I grew up, I I made it a mission of mine. I wanted to leave this part of life. You know, at the age of 15, me and my father didn't get on, uh, and we we don't get on now. I, in fact, I haven't spoken to him for a number of years. Um, and for reasons I won't get into, you know, but I can, I, I know a lot of you un, uh, will already know, and there's probably a lot of you that you understand. Coming from the background I do, you'll probably sort of picture it in your mind. How I turned out is probably why, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, um, I made it a mission I wanted to leave. Now, as I've said in other videos, I've always set targets and wanted to do stuff. And actually, as I think back in life, that was one of my targets. At the age of 15, I didn't want to be there anymore. So me and my fa father got into a bit of a kerfuffle and uh, you know, and we finished it off in the garden and I left home. I never went back, never, ever, ever went back. At the age of 15, I was on my own. I moved to a big city um, in Worcestershire called Worcester City in the UK. Um, and I was on my own. I just went to uh, a bed and breakfast and just said, can you help me? And this lovely bloke actually, I'm, I haven't seen him for over 20 years. I mean, he might not even be alive anymore, bless him. Um, but he took me in and, you know, he spoke to the, you know, the social services and all the rest of it and got it all sorted so he could look after me. Um, and he did, you know, a couple of years he gave me work. I never went back to school, you know. I think I went, yeah, I did. I, I went back to do my GCSEs, if you like. Um, I didn't do very well. I'm, I've never been that sort of person. I'm more of a... Um, hands-on kind of person you know I've always learnt in life I got my qualifications after school I did go to um, to college that didn't last very long because I was too handy with these and I was I was actually a dairyman uh, which is how I started work I was I used to milk cows every day um, but actually because I kept on breaking my hands uh, and having a flaming my nose sorted and face hanging off and all the rest of it um, I couldn't do being a dairyman because it was uh, unhygienic apparently, having plaster on and sorting cows out. <laughs> um, so I moved on from that and did something else, did bits of building, did bits of plumbing and eventually worked in a hotel as a, as a teenager. Um, I run a hotel as a teenager, you know, as an 18 year old, there's people that will remember uh, a certain hotel I used to run in Worcester. It wasn't a big hotel, it wasn't nothing special, it was just a hotel basically you know like a hostel if you like um, and actually I there was a girl who sent me a message on Facebook yesterday who I've known for a long long time Fiona bless her um, and she said she, I, she told she actually wrote in a message she wrote a diary and went back into the diary of something that happened to me when I was in my teens I was training too hard and um, being a boxer and I was actually uh, an actual club dancer as well I used to work for a particular club in Birmingham as a dancer <laughs> I had hair then I had a lovely body you know and all the rest of it um, 
And she's actually got it wrote in her diary a, th a couple of things we used to get up to and I, I need to get back in touch with her to uh, find out. I, I don't remember a lot, but <laughs> the stuff I do remember, I, I, you know, I do like talking about. So, uh, it, as a youngster running a hotel, it's, it's, poof, it's amazing. You know, I, I never, never learned to do it. And, and sorry, I never, never got any qualifications to do it. I just learned. I was shown. And as I progressed in life, I wanted to be a truck driver. I don't know why. My father was a truck driver. He was always away. Why the hell did I want to be a truck driver? But I did it. You know, I was very fortunate that um, it must be in my blood, I suppose. And, and, you know, I didn't even have a driving lesson. I went out for an assessment and, and passed. <laughs> so, I don't know why. Perhaps because I drove tractors as well. Um, so I became a truck driver and I worked for a particular company in, in Droitwich in Worcestershire where I met a lot of guys I'm still very good friends with. Um, they, they, some of them have been watching this. Um, and they taught me a lot of stuff that, you know, you generally are supposed to learn in a classroom, if you like. You know, it was all hands-on stuff. And I became a profession at that and to the point where when I used to drive... For, um, I used to drive for an owner driver and run his company, you know, for, a, for an amount of time. And I was very anal on doing particular parts of the job, you know, I was very clean anyway. Um, I always had to have a shiny truck. Um, and there's a particular job in truck driving that's called roping and cheating, which is flatbed. Um, and I was very anal, it had to look perfect. And even the guys that showed me, they said to me, incredible, you know, and that's great. And then I went on from there, I wanted to be a plumber. Um, who am I? I'm a plumber, I'm a truck driver, I'm everything I suppose. I became a plumber. Um, I got bored of it because I don't like, I'm not really into sorting people's toilets out really if you like or you know changing the U-bend on a saggy sink because they've got too much hair and fluff in there. I don't like dirty jobs. <laughs> um, so I went from that and I became a digger driver. I did like that, I've got to be honest, that is something I did like. Um, and so who am I? I'm, I'm just me, I'm, you know, I grew up in a rough council estate, in the hood if you like, in America, uh, for the Americans. Um, I'm just me, I'm nobody special and, and, and when people say, oh you're such an inspiration doing these videos, blah blah blah, I do it to help me as much as helping others, so when there's others out there, um, I want them to watch it. You know, I've had messages off friends for the last 24 hours and people that wouldn't have even known, you know. Who am I? I'm Jace, I'm Big Bad Jace. Who am I? I'm the bloke that fought three truck drivers on a lorry park because they had a go at somebody. <laughs> Who am I? I'm a bloke that battered the living daylights out of a bloke that looks like Stone Cold Steve Austin because he was a bully. Who am I? I'm the one that always gets involved if somebody's got a problem. As I said before, I'm a problem solver. A lot of my mates, you know, a lot of people I don't know. I've always tried to solve their problems because that's the sort of person I am. You know, my persona, uh, it's a bit different now. You know, when I had a nose all bent across my face, hair down to here, two big earrings and muscles and all the rest of it my persona was very different and I understand that people used to walk the other side of the street and all the rest of it you know there was me and a big a, uh, you know a big family in Worcestershire me and one of the boys would always beat the daylights out of each other he had a big name I had a big name he hated me I hated him and it wasn't because we didn't like each other it's because he wanted a piece of what I had and I wanted a piece of what he had <laughs> So who am I? I'm just Jace. I just, I just solve problems. So now, Jace in his 40s, um, I'm just, just living the dream, I suppose. I don't know. I don't quite know. Um, who am I? I'm a family man. More importantly, I'm a family man. You know, my wife's gone out to work today. It's normally a day off. She's amazing. The, the work, the job that she does, I won't get into it, but the job she does is absolutely fascinating. Um, one week she's very good, the next week she's not so good. But the majority of the time, she's amazing at what she does. And I've been very fortunate where I didn't have to work for the last three years. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Don't think for one minute 
that we've got plenty of money, we've got nothing like any money, you know, we live week by week, you know, and that's hard for me to tell people, because people have got the misconception, because, you know, uh, we've got a property in the UK, and we've got, you know, we rent one here, they think we've got money, no, we haven't, the property we've got in the UK is an absolute friggin' headache, um, we don't rent it out, it's empty, <laughs> uh, but we still have to pay for it, so we haven't got money, uh, don't get me wrong, I mean if anybody's watching this and they feel like donating, please go ahead and send me a message, I'll take any sort of donations you want to give to me. The wind's picking up now, so if you hear the wind, hopefully my voice is taking over. It's a new phone, so hopefully, it's a no tape by the way, really chuffed with it, very nice. So who am I? I'm not the bad person people have always seen. You know, I'm not that person. A lot of my friends know and understand that, but a lot of people have known me for a long time and just see me as a bloody nutter. You know, one of my friends yesterday, he said, you're not all that bad. You might have thrown a couple of people through windows, but you're all right, really. You've never been horrible to me, and I haven't. You know, the people that I may have thrown through windows back in the day are probably idiots as had to go at somebody else. You know, I can remember a particular time when a man was actually beating the living daylights out of his missus in the middle of Worcester. Um, <laughs> I don't stand for things like that. I don't care who you are. You could be Rocky Balboa. You're still going to get it from me if you've done something in front of me or near me. I don't care who you are. Um, but that's, I don't want people to say I'm, I'm that mean, horrible person. It's just I'm a very protective kind of guy. Who am I? Just Jace. I suppose people see me very differently you know I we with my wife's work we get involved with uh, very different people you know different backgrounds you know they've been very fortunate more fortunate than us you know and we get to have dinner with these lovely people and they're just amazing and yeah being able to mix and be involved with those sort of people has been brilliant my wife works with some fascinating people um, I haven't really the last couple of years and I'm very honest I don't lie, I haven't really been involved with them because I can't be bothered, to be honest. If that's the God's honest truth. It wasn't because I don't like them, it's because I can't be bothered. I've got too much going on in here and I just want to get it out. Now this, I'm doing this, it's coming out. And actually I'm starting to feel better about it. You know, like I've said already, this is my, this is my therapy. <laughs> this water, this genius, it's coming in. <laughs> um, this is my therapy. And me being um, distant from my wife's work colleagues wasn't because I didn't like them, it was because I just couldn't be bothered really, to be honest. And I'm opening up more now, you know. Um, I'm seeing them very differently to how I saw them before. Um, I see people very differently to how I saw them before anyway, because obviously of what's gone on in life. You know, you can't be the same person you were. It's impossible. So who am I? I'm different to what I was, you know, but I was never a bad person anyway, and I'm not a bad person now, I just want people to see me as me, you know, I don't want, like I've said before, I don't want people rolling a red carpet out for me, that's certainly not me, you know, I don't want people to appreciate or understand or really care, to be honest, about my cancer, if I'm unwell, maybe I want a little bit of understanding, um, that said, when I go to work, nobody, nobody, and I mean nobody, would know that I'm ill. Because I don't let you know. <coughs> um, even towards the end of my chemotherapy, um, stupidly I was driving trucks. Now, some of my friends who've been watching this know because I had to take a few people with me, to be honest. Um, truck drivers and non-truck drivers. Um, and... They had to be there as a just in case. But I still did it, but I wouldn't let anybody know. I wouldn't let anyone know. You know, even when I was making a delivery. Hey, how you doing? Yeah, yeah, living the dream, how are you? What you got in for? I just go out for a ride out, but I'll pay him anyway, because that's the sort of guy I am. Um, <clears throat> and that's what I did. You know, I wouldn't wouldn't let anybody know, and I wouldn't let anyone know now. You know, I'm, I'll go into work, and I might not feel like it, but I'm still Jace. I'm still doing what I do best putting a smile on solving problems that's the sort of person I am I'm a problem solver so rabbited on a bit too much probably I'm gonna read I'm gonna watch this after and see if it's understandable probably isn't but <laughs> somebody might relate to it I hope so anyway so listen 
like comment and subscribe i am getting a few more please share the videos um get people to share the videos send them out there get people to do what they do i don't know let's get some more subscribers help me out guys but listen thank you ever so much for watching really appreciate what you've been doing on the other videos keep doing it and uh the ones that know me love you all to death the ones that don't know me i'm gonna love you to death <laughs> stay lucky